O'Clock and this is the Beer O'Clock Show, where every week we engage in some light-hearted, beer-related banter. My name is Mark, and joining me from Essex is my mate Steve. <laughs> Hello, Steve. Good evening, Mark. How are we doing? I'm doing well. I almost fell into the last season's habit of trying to come up with something funny about Essex, but I realise I don't do that anymore because I, yeah. I don't have anything left funny to say about Essex. Yeah, because there, there were only 20 things funny about Essex. <laughs> yeah. is, is, is that it? Is that well, saying? nothing else worth mentioning anyway. Yeah, I suppose not. There well, were... I'm here. I live in Essex. That's, yeah. that's worth mentioning. The king of Essex. Yes, indeed. My beer mentor, <laughs> Steve. Yeah. <laughs> If you haven't listened to the show before, basically the whole gist is it started off with Steve teaching me how to drink beer. And that is still kind of the case. There's plenty of beers that I haven't tasted before. I mean, last week we had Newcastle Brown, for goodness sake. Um, but it's kind of evolved into we just pick a beer, we taste it, we talk about it, and we talk about beers in general. So talking about beers in general, mate, what have you enjoyed in the last week? I have not had a huge amount, but I the three beers I've had uh, have all been IPAs. Oh. Shock. Um, so the, the first first one I tried was um, a, a plain bulk standard India Pale Ale from Harvey and Sons. Um, this was a beer that was given to me by our number one fan, uh, Mr. Statham, um, to, to sample. And, and I've got to say, it didn't disappoint. It was a, a nice, steady, easy drinking, probably what you call a session IPA because th- it was only 3.8%. I think I've got, I've had one of those because I remember I got a box of Harvey's from my last boss when I left my yeah. job last year. Yeah. I think, didn't you didn't you do do it on our Christmas show where we did two beers? I may well have. Was, wasn't that your second beer? I, I honestly can't remember. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Or, but it or, could have been, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I found it fairly bulk standard. Um, no, nothing really that special about it. Fairly easy to drink. Mm-hmm. Um, I then had a, 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 an IPA that I've had before, which was the Goose Island India Pale Ale, Ooh. which is just, just a nice, refreshing, really refreshing citrusy Pale Ale. Really cleanses the palate. palate. Um, and I had that. Uh, had a nice homemade Mexican meal on Saturday night, which, which that kind of washed down. Um, but the main event, as as it may be, the, the the beer that I chose to accompany my Mexican on on Saturday night was the Sierra Nevada to pit Torpedo Extra IPA, which I happened across in my local Tesco's, and I've got to say it did not disappoint. It was absolutely amazing. It was like their their, their normal Sierra Nevada, but with steel balls. <laughs> that's that's how good this beer was. It was hoppy. Um, citrusy, refreshing, smooth as you like, sweet as you like, full of beautiful beer fruits. It was an absolute stunner of a beer. <laughs> Great, because we did the Sierra Nevada something something last year, didn't we? We did, and that, yeah. that was quite the peppery beer, wasn't it? It was. This this in as as a as a direct. Um, kind of opposite to that right. this was sweet and smooth and fruity oh, but it, stunning beer um absolutely stunning couldn't drink too many of them at, at 7.8 <laughs> or 7.7 percent no wonder it's called a torpedo yeah big old beer but lovely absolutely lovely i would recommend if your local tesco stocks torpedo extra other supermarkets are available by the way (laughs) but if your local supermarket stocks it get yourself a bottle and get some of it down you because it is an incredible beer i'll have to have a look out for that especially after the sierra nevada from last year that was that was a great beer yeah stunner yeah anything else no that that was it that was my um week in beer so I, I only had had the three at the weekend. Okay, um, I can't remember one of the beers I had on the weekend, but I I did t- tap in on Untapped two of them. Um, one of them was the Hogsback Hop Garden Gold, which you can get in most supermarkets everywhere, I think, um, at least Waitrose. Uh, have you had that one before? I can't say I have. It's very nice. Yeah, I think, I think you'd like it. Again, one of these above average hoppy beers that you know a good drinker basically um and the other one i had was from our old favorites the whitewood brewery it's their witchcraft oh which is kind of blondie golden ale yeah yeah and that's really nice as well yeah i've got so I've, I've tried that a few times and i've 
I never really got on with it. Um, I might have to give it another go before I, before I completely dismiss it, though. Yeah, I think I'm more of a fan of the, the Golden Ales than perhaps you are. Possibly. Yeah. Then, then each to their own. Exactly. That's what we like. We like variety. We do, indeed. Yeah. Anything else happening in the beer world? Um, no, I, I picked up quite a selection of beer at the weekend. Um, I don't know what ha- what's happened to my local Tesco's. But they, they, I, I, I saw a story. There was a, there was a story in the press last week that, that, that spoke about how sa- sales in, in in real beers have, have increased by something like it was either fourteen or forty percent. I can't can't remember which one. And, and Tesco's were saying how they've seen an increase in in the like in sales in the likes of Harvestoon and your, your more popular beers. Yeah. Um, but when I went in there at, at the weekend, I seemed to have a whole new section of, of, of beers that I had never seen before. And, and within that section were, were two new variations from um, Newcastle. So not the new, the, by the people that make Newcastle brown out, Heineken, essentially. But it, it's, so they were in the same um, styled bottles, but not Newcastle brown out. So, so one of them was, was called uh, Newcastle tawny owl and the other one yeah i've only just got that actually <laughs> saying it out loud now i've only just just got what they've done there and the other one was a was a newcastle winter ipa so um i'm looking forward to giving those both a go um shortly um because uh, I, I think that they'll, it'll be interesting to see whether they can do variations on a theme or not yeah hmm interesting um, yeah, I've got no, nothing to report, unfortunately. Um, I, my beer shelf needs a proper good restacking. I probably need yeah. to clear some of those beers out, because I'm sure I've had some since we started recording last year. And I've yeah, still I'll got that... Um, mine out. I've still got a bottle of that Raven Black IPA as well. Oh, cheeky. Yeah, I might, I might do that Friday night. Cheeky little stash of Raven IPA. <laughs> That's a gorgeous beer. Yeah, mine went on New Year's Eve and I had to share it, unfortunately. And I've got a bottle of Goliath staring at me. The pirate on the front is staring at me at the moment. Oh, you know that which would be a... Yes, I yeah. That last year as well. The one that I can't seem to find. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on to the main feature. This week's featured beer is a beer that I've actually drunk before. Shock horror. Wow, that's um, a first. Only once, though, and that was about five years ago. Um, it's a popular beer, one that many people would have heard of. I don't know if many people would have drunk it. I'm sure they have, though, because it's quite common everywhere. It is Leffy Blonde, which is a Belgian beer. It's a Belgian Abbey beer. Abbey beer. Hmm. Okay, brewed in Belgium according to the traditional recipes of the monks of the Abbey of Leffy. I'm, I'm presuming it's pronounced Leffy and not Leff. Mm, I'm going with Leffy. Yeah. Uh, what do you know about this beer, mate? Uh, is it an old favourite of yours? Have you had it very often? Um, I'm not sure I've ever had it, oh, to, right. to be honest with you. This, this could very much be a first wow. for me. Um, it, it looks interesting. Yeah. Nice bottle. I, I like the foil top. Uh-huh. Um, it sounds quite interesting on, on the label. Selected aromatic malts give the beer its deep golden colour and full-bodied, fruity, lightly spiced taste. Mm. Served chilled with a large, creamy head. <laughs> so that shouldn't be too difficult to achieve that part of the, the, the session. No. Um, but I, I've done a little bit of looking up on um, what we consider uh, the definition of a Belgian Abbey beer, um, which is basically uh, they're a light variation on Pale Ale, often made with pills and malt. Um, and they have uh, very distinct styles. And I, I think I'm right in saying this is by far uh, an area where I'm an expert. But I think I'm right in saying every Belgian beer has its own glass that it should be served in. Right. And, and those glasses are designed to maximise the, the, the flavour and the appearance of the beer. Mm-hmm. And do you have your Leffy glass with you tonight? I do have my Leffy glass. I got the same pack at Christmas as you did. <laughs> <laughs> we were prepared for once. 
Yes. It's a, it's a beautiful glass, though, isn't it? It's got the heavy it logo and everything on there. It's a nice heavy glass as well. Nice yeah. and weighted. Good yeah. heft to it. And perfect size for this teeny tiny little bottle. Yes, with yeah. plenty of room. If, if you look at it, there's at least an inch of, of, of space at the top of that glass for a head. Oh, I've still got that. Oh, yeah. Should be good. All right, shall we crack it open and have a pour and see how the head goes? Yeah, let's have it. This is my favourite bit. Oh, it's a bit lively out of the bottle. Oh, yeah. It's itching to come out and sit in its glass with its big, creamy, fruity head. Wow. There we go. Check out the colour on that as well. Looking good. That is a lovely... Oh, you can Golden. get you can get you can get that kind of hoppiness coming off the top. Oh yeah! So it's a lovely yellow golden colour. It's bloody lively. Yeah. Bubbles all over the shop. Nice thick head. And we, as we've said many a time, we do like a bit of head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Shall we? Um. Oh, it's got a very European nose to it. And by that, I mean those vice beers I've had recently, the wheat beers, the German wheat beers have got that kind of yeah. smell to it. Yeah, it's got that creamy um, vice beer ness to it. Yeah, I'm hoping it doesn't mirror that in the taste because I'm not a big fan of wheat beers. Well, let's, let's see, shall we? All right. Chin -chin. Cheers. That aroma does carry over, but it's not as sickly as the wheat beers. No, it's it's got an initial sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. And pick that up straight away. It's like drinking, first impression, it's like drinking a sweet lager that's actually got some flavour Yeah. to it. It, it is uh, very light. Yeah. Hefty aftertaste going on there. That's yeah, it's kind of help. sitting there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's in no rush to go, is it? No. No rush to go at all. Yeah, nice... It's not a strong spiciness, but there's a spiciness there. And you can feel the malt kind of layering themselves on. Yep, it's it's like um when we drink when we've done the the, the darker roasted malty beers. It, yeah. It's got that kind of flavour but not the appearance. Oh there's a pepperiness coming through now. That's that's peculiar. Yeah, I haven't taken another sip, I'm just letting it activate on my tongue. Hmm. I'll have another go. Okay, that second sip is is a bit more um, drinkable compared to the first sip, I think. Yeah. Because yeah, I think I was a bit I feared after smelling it that it was going to be all wheat beery, but it's not. It... No, it's it, it it definitely has that. That wheat beer scent and aroma to it. Yeah. Um, you get a little bit of the sweetness that you get in, in, in your wheat beers. Um, but it's it, it's just... I, I can't get away from feeling it's like a sweet lager. And I know that's probably not what the, the monks of the Leffy Abbey were hoping for. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, the, the Abbey of Leffy, not the Lebby Effy. <laughs> Lebby <laughs> Hang on, how much have I had? <laughs> you've had about. You know what I mean. You've had 150 mils so far, probably. Yeah. It's about as much as I've had. Half of it. It's it's a nice glass, but and and I know I know we might have some some proper beer purists that listen to this show and love the the, the European, Belgian Trappist type beers, but I, I love the glass. But I would feel like an absolute ponce if I was sat in a pub with that glass. Um, I can just about... I'm, I'm okay with it at home, but I don't know whether I'd want to be seen in public with it. Right. <laughs> you need to stop worrying about what people think of you, mate. Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose yeah. so. I wouldn't mind because, I mean, it's got Leffy on it. It's obvious that it was poured out for me. It's not like I asked for, for my for my beer to be served in a wine glass. Yeah, I'd, uh, I suppose I suppose it could be worse. It could be I could be drinking Fosters out of one of their Fosters branded glasses, couldn't I? Yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, 
we digress. We digress just slightly as we like to do. Yeah, well, it wouldn't it wouldn't be us without the the, the digressing, would it? No. So let's see what other. I'm hoping I can get some more sense out of it, other than just the weep. Yeah. Um. It's it's more to, it's it's more malty than than I guess we're used to. I suppose quite quite recently we've done um, quite a few hoppy beers, haven't we? And, and and there's there's no hops coming through in in this. Not really, no. There was a little bit when I first poured it out, but I think that may have just been the beeriness. <laughs> yeah. There's just like a really faint hint of spice on the nose. I think. But that soon gave way to this very sweet malt. Well, I don't even know if... I mean, sweet is a bit of a catch-all. There's different types of sweetness, isn't there? There's yeah. kind of like... It could be... Um, I mean, some of them... Some of the beers we've had have had like a dark fruit sweetiness to it. This one... I don't know. I would almost say it's like a toffee sweetness, but not... Or even a caramel sweetness to it, but not quite. You know what I'm getting at? Yeah, it's it's got that. Yeah, what it's, is that? It's, it's got. It's, it's almost like a. Hmm, not like a sweet pudding I aftertaste. Think, it's kind of like. This is. Listeners from season one will understand Mark's trip down memory lane. Um, but when I was a kid, <laughs> I used to get these soft sweets that were custard and... No, were they? Um, strawberries and cream ones. And, th- yeah, kind of like a sweet, creamy smell to it with a very hint of fruit like a strawberry type fruit to it but not but the the strawberry doesn't overpower it just gives it that little hint of flavor so that's what i'm getting that, that's my memory <laughs> yeah i'm just getting a not not wishing to, to trample all over your memory there but i'm i'm quite simply just getting um sweet malts f- from it um it's it's fruity. There's a there's a fruitiness in the background there. Yeah. Um, can't can't really describe what what I'm getting in terms of of the fruit. Maybe very faint peachiness, but not quite peachiness. It's like there's just like they've just added a dip of something fruity to it, but not enough for for you to be able to say that's that fruit or this fruit. Yeah. Um, it's weird. I, I think I've, I've, I've just just been looking up, looking at it on on, on their, their official website to, to try and see to get an idea if there's any hops or or anything in there. And it doesn't it doesn't say anything about hops, so so I'm wondering if there are any hops or if they've used hops or if if they're they're just in the background. Um, so so again, if there's, if there's anyone out there that actually knows more about Belgian Abbey beers than we do, we'd appreciate you letting us know if they do use hops in their brewing or, or not, or if they just rely on the malts. But, yeah. but the website seems to suggest that the aftertaste is bitter orange, and and that's what's giving it the the spiciness as well. Okay, I was looking on Cyclops to see if there are any tasting notes, but yes, it's not on there, is it? No, that's weird. Yeah. Hmm. Um, let's have a look on. I'm determined to see what other people think for once. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rather than just go with our own opinion. Let's have a look on Rape Beer. Leffy Blonde. It's got an 86 out of 100 overall, which isn't too bad. Oh, delicious fruit notes, creamy texture. We've got all that already. Um. Citrus spices, yeast, and some alcohol. Now I can't smell the yeast in it. There's there's some suggestions. I'm I'm, I'm on. I found a homebrew website here where they're, they're um, pe- people are asking for um, a Leffy Blonde clone, which, which I assume is, is is a recipe to get as close to this as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it, it talks about there's four, there's a few different types of malt that they're recommending goes into it. So there's Belgian biscuit, Belgian aromatic, German Munich, and honey malt. And then it goes on to say um, uh, a, a bittering hop and then a flavour hop. But I, I don't think it's... So, so yeah, I, I, I'm going with the assumption that the, the primary method of brewing here is, is with the malts rather than the hops. Yeah. So I'm taking my down to see what people are saying the actual flavours are. But no, it seems to come down to just a hint of fruit with a nice creamy aftertaste. Which I think is probably a fair enough submission. You don't need to pick out specific fruits, yeah. I suppose. Um, I think there's a little bit of sticky toffee pudding going on there. <laughs> Someone here on Rate Beer says it's a... Some Belgian sour noted in aroma together with banana and gum. There's a combination for you. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not relating to the banana. There. I can relate to the banana more than I can relate to the gum. Here's another one tasted the sweet and balanced toffee peach in a smooth, slightly bitter finish. I think mm. that's that's fair. It's um. Certainly belch worthy. Oh yes. Making me very windy. <laughs> Those bubbles are coming back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm getting I'm getting uh, again, um people that will remember back to, to the glorious days of season one will will remember um the, the, the loving phrase that I use, the after belch. Yeah. Um I'm, I'm getting no hops or anything on the after belch. It's it's all the the, the, the fizz and the the, the, the sweet flavours. Um, more than it is hops. Uh huh. Yeah. So um, let's round this, this discussion up now. And how would you rate this beer, mate? I I think um, firstly I'm absolutely thrilled to bits that that, that while while we've been off air, the untapped now allow you to do half ratings. Yes. As, as well. That's just legendary because it means I can now properly sit on the fence with with, with things where I don't want to make a decision. So I, I don't, if I'm honest, it's a nice beer, but there's nothing absolutely stand out about it. It's, it's a bit standard. It's a bit of a standard, sweet, fizzy. I'm not going to use the word lager because I think that would be doing it an injustice, but it's just a bit of a standard sweet fizzy beer. Um, so, so I don't think I would give this any more than three out of five. Okay. I gave it three and a half out of five. Um, like you say, it is basically a sweet fizzy light ale. Um, for me, if this was in a pub that had otherwise a shit selection, I would choose this for one. Yeah. Um, just to have one of them, because it's quite he quite heavy going on the ABV. Um, now, granted, I, I, we do skull hours within 20 minutes, so that, that doesn't help. <laughs> That's for the sake of our art. <laughs> for the sake of our art. It yeah. doesn't help with the lightheadedness that I'm currently experiencing. Yeah. <laughs> Hence your need to get us wrapped up early. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I think this is it's very nice. Um, asterisk but it's nothing special it's definitely drinkable it has a nice it has character to it compared to some of the beers we've had before but there's a creaminess to it which is nice and palatable but the other flavors aren't really there you're kind of left wondering what is there apart from the creaminess just this inexplic inexplicable fruitiness that i can't really describe um yeah, I, I, mean, I, I go. I agree with that actually. Yeah, now that my mouth is used to the bitterness and the wheat beeriness of it, it is just a mouthful of creaminess now, and I'm, le I'm being left a little bit cotton mouthed. Yeah, it, it it'll be interesting because seeing as we both got the, the same gift set for for Christmas, we've we've both got a bottle of Leffy Brown or yeah. Brun um, residing on our have shelves at the moment it will be interesting um maybe to revisit this in a few weeks time and, mm -hmm. and do and do the brun yeah 
yeah. um, and, and, and see if we can make comparisons between the two and or, or to see whether it's actually any different because I'm, I'm already thinking I could take a pretty decent stab in the dark at what the, 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 the brun is going to taste like. Yeah. It's gonna, I think it's going to be this, but thicker. <laughs> yeah, I think I've had the brown before. And from yeah, from memory serves, I preferred the blonde back then. The brown oh. was a bit too much, but that was before I got into ales. I was barely into lagers back then. So that and will be interesting to see. We'll, we'll we'll do that in a month or so. Yeah. Before it goes off. Yeah, let's not let's not get all too too <laughs> European too early on in season two. Yeah, but this is kind of the route we're going to be taking every now and then, just occasionally, because there's so many great British breweries out there we want to try. But we're going to be dipping our toes into the European waters now and then. Um, that beer shop that I keep telling you about in Berry St. Edmunds, they are importing US beers as well. Oh, so marvellous. I'm going to try and pick up a couple of different ones um, and get some to you. Yeah, um, you might have to let me know next time you're heading to, to Bury, and I might have to see if I'm available to meet you there. <laughs> I think because it's, it's only it's only actually forty five minutes down the road from me. Yeah, it's a great shop. Yeah, it's small, um, huge selection of European. It, he doesn't deal in the mass market stuff really. He's got a, little, a few Adams bits, and he's got some Brewdog bits because I think he's a bit of a fan of Brewdog. Um. But not like the punk IPA stuff. He's got some of their more eclectic stuff. Yeah. But shitloads of European Abbey beers, Trappist beers, um, homebrew beers. He sells them there. And apparently he's getting a stock of American stuff in, which is hard to get. Yeah, I love the sound of the American stuff. Cause I'm, I'm yeah. a big fan of some of the American craft beers that, that I've tried. Yeah. He's got a website. I'll send you the details for the website as well. Cause yes, you can buy yes, online. please. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll post the details of the website as well so our, our listeners can have a look rather than just keep it secret between yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. I hate to mention the name of the shop until they start sponsoring us. Yes. We, we need money. <laughs> we, need, we just need beer. Just, just need beer. Just send us beer. We are quite easily bought out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, let's wrap this up. Website is beeroclockshow.co.uk. You can find us on Twitter at Beer O'Clock Show. Also on Facebook, if you go to facebook.com slash Beer O'Clock Show, that's where you can find us. I don't know if you've been posting stuff there recently, Steve, but we're going to be picking all that up anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, Facebook's been quiet while, while we've been off air, yep. um, but, but now we're back. Um, I'd, I'd say Facebook is the place to um, put your pictures and, and, and things and comments about the beer you're drinking. Um I think pretty much anything you post on Facebook will then appear on Twitter because the two feeds are linked. Cool. Yeah. Um, do follow us on Twitter if you tweet. Um, let us know what you're drinking. You can find us both on Untapped, which is an iPhone and Android app. Uh, Steve's Mental Bentos on there, and I am Roku, R O K K U. And you can also find Steve on Twitter at Mental Bentos. That's it from us. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, you're, you're very welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure once again. Yeah. Next week is another beer unknown <laughs> until Steve decides what it is. <laughs> <laughs> until then, thanks for listening. Cheerio. Bye-bye. This is a recording uh, for the Beer O'Clock Show uh, by Anthony Statham uh, at at Stat79 on Twitter. I'm reviewing a Black Sheep Brewery uh, Progress Limited Edition 20 year anniversary beer. Um, Won it in a competition just before Christmas uh, on Twitter. Um, And what can I say about this fantastic beer? It doesn't disappoint. First things first, it comes in a 750 milliliter bottle with a reseedable lid, which is awesome. So I'm probably going to have half tonight and half tomorrow night because it is 10%. So it's a strong, full-bodied beer. Very, very strong. Uh, undid it to a little, uh, to a little fizz when I undid the lid. 
really didn't at this point. Loved it. Really gave a bit of a sense of occasion to the to the moment. Uh, poured it into the glass. Doesn't have particularly have a head on it, but it is uh, it, it is almost uh, ruby like in colour. I mean, tasted it. I was expecting uh, slightly more full bodied uh, ale, uh, but it's more more of a ruby ale, which is um, almost sherry like in its aftertaste. It's, it's that strong, but it tastes ridiculous. It is so so good. I'm halfway through the bottle. Um, I'm pretty drunk, and it's really good. Uh, Steve will be particularly disappointed because uh, he told me about the competition and uh, I won it. So, uh, chin up, Steve. Um, I wish you were drinking it with me, but unfortunately you're not. If you can get hold of a bottle of this, have a bottle. It is absolutely fantastic. Definitely a sense of occasion. It'd be great to share it with someone. Um, but I've got it all to myself, so uh, chin up to uh, all you listeners. Number one fan, over and out.